This is the third video of a three video series on exploiting Mutility with SQL Map. In the previous videos, we set up Docker and Mutility on Kali Linux. In this video, we'll focus on using SQL Map to exploit vulnerabilities in Mutility. In case you've stopped your Mutility instance, I'm just going to Start mine up again with sudo docker compose up. And the password for the Kali user is Kali. And I'm going to open up an additional terminal window. And the first thing I'm going to do is let's make sure that SQL map is installed. I'll ask SQL map for the version. Okay, it returned a version number, so SQL map is installed. As you are learning to use SQL map, one of the most important commands is the help command. You can use dash H. There was more help content than fits on my screen. So I can pipe the help command to the less command so that I can more easily navigate the help content. So now I can use page down and page up or the arrow keys to navigate the help content. SQL map dash H gives you a little help, but if you want more help, you can use dash HH. I'll pipe this to less as well. This is similar, but gives you information about additional uh, command line options. Let me clear the screen. Now, first, let's try a naive approach. In the video for part two, we saw that there was a SQL injection vulnerability on the user info page. So let's target that page with SQL map. So I'm running SQL map and I'm telling it to use the URL, that's the dash U, and localhost slash index.php question mark page equals user dash info dot php. Let's run that. So here SQL map is prompting us to uh, accept cookies as set by the server. The default option is yes, so to accept I'll just press enter. As the output scrolls by, we can see it is attempting to exploit the page get parameter, but no attempts to exploit the username or password parameters. SQL map will prompt us several times. Uh, typically, accepting the default is a good choice unless you have specific reasons to do otherwise. We also saw that it was attempting exploits targeting several different database systems, such as MySQL, Postgres, Microsoft SQL Server, and Oracle. At the end, SQL map is telling us that all the tested parameters do not appear, appear to be injectable. We know that username is an injectable parameter, but SQL map did not test that parameter. So let's make sure that SQL map knows about all the get parameters. I'm going to go back to the application and I'm going to copy and paste the URL uh, after I submit the form. So I'll just give it some, some uh, dummy information. A for name, B for password. I'll click view account details. And now I'm going to copy and paste the entire URL.
I'm going to run SQL map again, and I'm going to paste the URL. I'm going to enclose this in quotes. You can use single quotes or double quotes, but it has some characters in the URL that would be interpreted as uh, special shell command characters. So putting in, in quotes will, will help with that. And I'm going to run that again. I'll accept the cookies again. Again, I'm going to accept the default option here. Now we can see something a little different than we saw before. Here it says it looks like the the backend database is MySQL. Do you want to skip test payloads specific for other DVMSs? So I'll say yes. And I'll say yes to that as well. We can see here there's a message indicating that the username field is injectable. Since it found that, that the get parameter username is vulnerable, it asks if we want to keep testing other parameters. The default here is no. There's no need to test other parameters if we've already found one that's vulnerable. So it tells us that the backend database is MySQL. It gives us some additional information about the web server operating system uh, and the versions of Apache and PHP that it's running, and a little bit of additional information about the version of MySQL that's running. So it's given us a lot of information. And if we need to review any of this information later, it's saved information about what it's found at, at this path here. But we can get even more information. First, let's find out what the database name is. So we'll run the same command, but I'll add an additional option, current DV. So there may be multiple databases in the underlying MySQL application, but I'm just asking about the current database used by this web application. I'm going to accept the cookies. You'll see that that ran a lot faster, and that's because SQL Map already knows all the information that it found before. It knows which field was vulnerable, uh, and it knows what to do to exploit that. And so what it tells us now is that the current database is named, not surprisingly, utility. Now let's find out what tables are in the utility database. So here I'll say that I want to check the database utility and that I want it to show us the tables. Again, I'll accept the cookies. I'm going to scroll up just a little bit here. And we can see that the database utility contains 12 different tables. There are two tables here that I think are really interesting, accounts and credit cards. So for our final step, let's dump the contents of the accounts and credit card tables. I'm going to run that same command that I ran before. And by the way, to get to that, that command that I ran previously, I just press the up arrow on the keyboard and that will load in my previous command. You can press the up arrow again to get to the command before that and the command before that, etc. 
So the uh, up arrow key can be really useful when interacting with the, um, with the Linux shell. So I'm going to do basically the same thing, but now I'm going to tell it that I want the table accounts and I'm going to pass it an additional option called dump. And that's just going to tell SQL map to save that information to a file. I'll accept the cookies. And it's finished already. Now, if I scroll up, I can see some of the information that it's, uh, it's just included on the screen. But it also tells us here that it saved the table uh, accounts to a CSV file. So let's take a look at that file. We can see that there is an is admin field, and we have at least two administrator accounts uh, based on the value of that column. And the password column appears to be stored in plain text. If we continue down this file, we'll find one more admin account as well. Let's dump the credit cards table as well. So I'm just going to run the same command, but I'm going to change the table name to credit cards. That was incredibly fast. I'm gonna scroll up just a little bit. Uh, this table's shorter, so even though it saved it to a CSV file for us, we can view the entire table right here. The table contains five rows, each with a credit card number, CCV number, and an expiration date. Don't worry, these aren't real credit card numbers. These are just samples for the Mutility application. But it demonstrates how powerful SQL Map can be. It took us from identifying a SQL injection vulnerability in a single field to dumping admin credentials and credit card numbers. Now there's one more SQL map option uh, to be aware of, and that's dash dash all. Dash dash all can be extremely time consuming, so I won't demonstrate it here, but it will attempt to access every table of every database on the underlying server and dump them to disk, all from a single SQL injection vulnerability on a single field. I hope you will continue to explore Mutility to continue learning about web application vulnerabilities and SQL Map to discover more of its features. You might be wondering how to secure your applications against SQL injection. OWASP has a great resource for this, their SQL injection prevention cheat sheet. Thanks for watching.